Climbing back upon Mount Soapbox for another rant. And if you have a rant suggestion for a future episode, be it about gaming, YouTube, whatever I happen to cover on the channel, obviously mostly video games, and I haven't done that rant yet, be sure and check the uh, rant playlist first just in case. Then you can send your rant suggestions my way via the comment section, Twitter, Facebook, or Discord. All the social media to the Go Burns Nation linked below in the description section. Now today we're obviously ranting about success on YouTube or whatever I ended up titling this. I came across an article on Bloomberg regarding this particular subject which kind of piqued my interest as a content creator and streamer on YouTube. By the way, the article linked below in the description section. Success on YouTube still means a life of poverty. You can have a million views a month and still not be able to make rent. Do you or your children dream of YouTube stardom? Do them a favor and crush that ambition now. New research out of Germany billed as among the first to review the chances of making it in the new Hollywood shows a vanishingly small number will ever break it through just like in the old Hollywood. In fact, 96.5% of all those trying to become YouTubers won't make enough money off the advertising to crack the U.S. poverty line, according to research by Matthias uh, Bartle, a professor at Offenburg University of Applied Sciences in Offenburg. Breaking into the top 3% of the most viewed channels could bring an advertising revenue of about $16,000 a year, Bartle found in an analysis for Bloomberg News that's a bit more than the U.S. poverty line of $12,000 for a single person. The guideline for a two-person household is just over $16,000. The top 3% of video creators of all time in Bartle's sample attracted more than 1.4 million views per month. Quote, unquote, if you're a serious regular on the network TV show, you're getting a good amount of money, said Alice Marek an associate professor of communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, yet you can have half a billion followers on YouTube and still be working at Starbucks. And here's a pretty interesting chart over on the article for you to look at yourself. Breaking through is harder than ever. The top 3% of most viewed YouTube channels are drawing an increasing share of overall viewership, making it tougher for the masses. So you see the bottom 97% that number is continuing to get lower. It was very low in uh, 2016 compared to 10 years ago in like 2006, where the top 3% is getting a huge chunk of those views. So the top 3% of YouTube content creators and streamers, their views are like 90% and 10% is for basically everybody else. Continuing, children born after YouTube was created in 2005 have grown up surrounded by videos churned out by performers such as this guy, that guy, that person, whose clips about their daily lives, video gaming, and fashion respectfully have turned YouTuber into a popular career goal. One in three British children, 6 to 17, told pollsters last year that they wanted to become a full-time YouTuber. That's three times as many as those who wanted to become a doctor or a nurse. Tom Burns, no relation, that I know of, founder of Summer in the City, an annual British YouTube convention, said his cousin wanted to skip college to become a full-time YouTuber. Quote-unquote, I almost flipped out. I was because, like, no, that's the dumbest thing you can say, he said. You can't guarantee you'll be able to do it as a job. Of course, the goal is to be a superstar. The top 1% of creators garnered from 2.2 million to 42 million views per month in 2016. Barl's research shows that the top tier performers often earn side money through sponsorships and other deals, so calculating their earnings is more complicated. YouTube ad rates are opaque and changed over time, but Barl used an income of $1 per 1,000 views for an average YouTuber to calculate his earning estimates. That rate is a good rule of thumb, said Harvey Hugo of Goat Agency, an influencer marketing firm in London, quote unquote, I've seen as low as 35 cents per thousand views and work with some YouTubers who can earn $5 per a thousand, he said. A YouTube spokeswoman said the company is working to help people make more money, such as through sponsorships and a feature that lets viewers pay to have their comment featured. The number of channels earning six figures is up 40%. Year over year, the spokeswoman said, quote unquote, we continue to see tremendous growth 
with creators on YouTube. In the US, the median hour wage earned by actors is $18.70, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which doesn't report annual salaries for actors. People trying to make it on YouTube have long complained that the company protects a handful of stars, promoting them at the expense of the masses struggling to break out. The imbalance is huge and becoming worse, according to Bartle's research. In 2006, the top 3% accounted for 63% of all views. Ten years later, the top YouTubers received nine of every ten views he found. The bottom 85% of those who started posting in 2016 got a maximum of 458 views per month. Categories matter. Some videos have better chance than others. It's become more difficult to succeed by just vlogging. All right, so the uh, black bar indicates news and politics. Red, people and blogs. Blue, gaming. Let's see, the light blue, bluish green, is music, and gray is comedy. All right, so clearly in first place, it's news and politics. I guess I should go back to my political channel. <laughs> then it's comedy. So people like politics. People like humor the most on YouTube. In third place, it's gaming. So hooray. And then fourth place is music. And at the very bottom, it's uh, vlogs slash people and blogs. So that's basically how this chart, I think, works going from 2011 all the way to 2016. There are hardly any barriers to entry, no auditions, no studio executives to impress, no need to be physically aware of anything close to Hollywood. Theoretically, you just need a phone and an internet connection. Still, professional class and boot camps have opened. Summer camps in the U.S. can cost $569. Buying the same equipment used by a uh, you know, popular YouTuber would cost to see $3,700. A uh, 19-year-old computer scientist at uh, Grand Canyon University in Phoenix has spent $460 on a camera and a tripod for his YouTube channel where he uploads a video a day. Asher Benjamin has published more than 150 video diaries or vlogs that are essentially a catalog of his life at college, brief updates about things he's done, his plans for the day, what he's eaten, and uh, see appearances from his roommates, uh, quote unquote, I don't know where it's going to end up, he said. It'd be cool if I could take the path others have and make it into a job, but we'll have to see, quote unquote. Benjamin spends an hour a day editing his videos and holds out hope that his postings could become a career even after he's heard the odds. Quote unquote, I think if I keep uploading, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to make it a career, he said. He recently hit 100 subscribers up from 71 at the start of the year. Sadly, it's only getting more difficult. YouTube announced earlier this month, and we did a rant about this a few weeks ago, viewers must now have at least 4,000 hours watched on their videos over the last year, and YouTubers need 1,000 subscribers or more to be eligible to make money from advertising. Apparently, there's one route that's easier to crack. Gaming YouTubers, you have a 14 times better chance than the traditional vloggers who often upload to people in blogs category on the website, according to Bartle's research. Once again, this article linked below in the description section. So a few things that I want to talk about is revolved around quote unquote success on YouTube. The issue here is a lot of people, I guess recently, are getting into YouTubing for the wrong reason. And I made a few videos about this in the past, you know, because I've been asked by some of my viewers and subscribers and fans, Go Burns, could you give us some tips, some pointers on how to become a YouTuber like you? Even though I only have, uh, you know, approaching 6,200 subscribers, you know, I do respect and am humbled by all the love that you guys give me. The first thing I always say is that you cannot make it about the money. I said this several years ago in my first video. I think that was like back in 2015 when I was a lot smaller. I think I said that again in a video, what, maybe a year ago? Maybe during 2017, I made another video about, you know, you know a little crash course in uh, becoming a content creator on YouTube. That was the big thing at first. If you're doing it for the money, don't do it. Because of the simple fact that it costs money to be a YouTuber. All right, you need a, a decent computer. You need good internet connection. You also need the software. I mean, there's some free software out there you can use but there's also a bit more expensive software. Plus you either need like a really good gaming PC or an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. And I'm talking about specifically being a gaming YouTuber. You need that stuff. And you need a game capture like an Elgato, for example. 
in order to capture decent quality uh, videos, you know, B-rolls like either a 720 or if you want to go really crazy, you can go with a 1080, I suppose. And then you need, uh, you know, good audio, for example, uh, a Blue Yeti microphone or a Blue Snowball, which is a little bit cheaper, but that works as well. So obviously, right off the bat, you're going to have to spend several hundred dollars and that can range from hundreds of dollars to even thousands of dollars if, for example, you decide to go out and buy a brand new gaming PC, which is you know like top of the line. That can be from like two to three thousand dollars. In order for you to become you know the next big gaming YouTuber, you're gonna have to throw a lot of money on the table with you know basically zero subscribers. This should not be about the money. That's not why I started my channel nearly four years ago coming up on, what, March 20th. I started this channel because I love making content. I started this channel because I love gaming. And I thought, hey, other people are making gaming videos. I want to do that too. And I never anticipated this to become a job. You know, if I'm lucky, maybe I can make enough money a month to pay my cable bill or pay a few other utilities, you know, help myself out a little bit. But at the same time, you'd have to, like, become ridiculously huge with you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions upon millions of views a month in order to make i guess a, an okay living at being a content creator or a streamer on youtube or twitch but at the same time i have no ambitions about ever making a ton of money strictly by youtube i mean i know this all too well from running this channel over nearly four years now. The amount of money you get per uh, view is like a fraction. Even if you have like crazy uh, viral videos on your channel, like I have a few that have gotten up there in you know, several like hundreds of thousands of views. A few have made it up there to six digits. And even those, if you, if you put the amount of money I've made back from those uh, videos, it's not that much. It's only like a few dollars. So do not get into YouTube to become a content creator or streamer on YouTube or Twitch because you want to do this as a career. Become a content creator or streamer because you want to be a content creator or streamer because you're passionate about whatever it is, whether it's politics and news, gaming or uh, the comedy stuff or vlogging. I also do vlogging on my vlogs channel, which by the way is not monetized, but that doesn't stop me from occasionally posting a video over there as well because... Sometimes there's something I'd like to say that isn't really revolved around video games that I would like to put over there. And uh, I do have nearly 200 subscribers on that channel, so I'm very appreciative to all you guys who subscribe there as well. The point is, I've been doing this channel for nearly four years, not because I'm looking for a big fat paycheck, but because it gives me something to do. It gives me a passion, a hobby. It's nice to have something like that in life. If you do have a job, if you do have school, and you want to be a content creator, that's fine. But just remember, you should always put work and school first. You know, you got to pay the bills. You got to get your education so you can get a good job. And you know, do the YouTube thing on the side, and you know, schedule time for you to record videos, or do like one video a week, or a couple videos a week. But if you if you seriously think that this is going to be your path to becoming um, you know, a superstar and a millionaire or a bazillionaire. It might happen, but there's a very real possibility it won't. I mean, look at me, for example. I've been doing this for nearly four years, and I have 6,200 subscribers, which I'm grateful for. Now, there's other content creators that have grown their channel faster than mine for whatever rhyme or reason, but the point is there's really no guarantees, none at all. Now, the success that you should focus on when it comes to YouTube is the success of you feeling that sense of accomplishment of actually making something content wise of having an idea and learning the skills in order to make videos in order to you know make the microphone work with the with the capture with the editing the recording mixing it all together and getting better at making thumbnails and all that other stuff that in my opinion is success because over the past four years i've gotten considerably better than when I started the channel back in March 2014. That's where I weigh success, how much better I am now than I was back then. I also weigh success by the fact that when I started, I had zero subscribers, zero views. Today, I have almost 6,200 subscribers, and 
like 1.4 million lifetime views on the channel. That is success to me. It's not monetary. I know that. The amount of money I've gotten back from this, small potatoes. Maybe I'll get more whenever I'm able to take tips and uh, sponsors for streaming and merchandise whenever I open a mar merchandise store and sell a few t-shirts. All that, by the way, voluntary. I don't expect any of my subscribers to tip to me or sponsor to me or buy a t-shirt for me. That's only if you want to. You don't have to. But at the same time, my greatest sense of accomplishment and success as a YouTuber is all the knowledge that I've gained and all the friends I've made and all the subscribers and all the people have taken the time out of their lives to watch my content and to subscribe to the channel and join the Go Burns Nation. That is how you should weigh success. Not based on money, because at the end of the day, when all this is said and done, when we go into the ground or we're cremated or this life ends, I don't know what's on the other side. Maybe there's something, maybe there's not. But at the end of the day, all the stuff you have, all the money, all the, the fancy toys and the cars and the boats and your home and your jewelry, all your junk that you have in your possession you can't take it with you. But if your primary focus is to do something that involves you making money, go into a career field where you can make money, whether it's the healthcare industry or become a lawyer, become a politician, become some sort of corporate suit, become an accountant, become a doctor. But if, if you really think that you're going to make money as a content creator, I'm here to tell you, that if, if we put the amount of money I've spent on my channel compared to the amount I've gotten back from quote unquote ad revenue, that's going to look very lopsided. There's going to be a higher stack of bills that are going to be in the red for the amount of money I spent over the past nearly four years with all the stuff I've purchased in order to give you guys the best content that I can. Like my gaming consoles, I include that as well, along with my microphone, my Elgatos. I've bought two or three Elgatos over the years, along with my gaming PC, which I just recently acquired after several months of saving up. That number, you know, a little bit higher than the amount of ad revenue I've gotten back from YouTube for nearly four years of making content on this channel. So, yes, you cannot gauge your success as a content creator or a streamer on YouTube or Twitch based on money. You have to focus on something else. The success is a self-accomplishment, is the fact that you got out, you did something, you put something together that you know maybe you know two or three people enjoyed or maybe two or 300 people enjoyed or maybe two or 3,000 people enjoyed. The point is somebody enjoyed it. Somebody took time out of their day and their life to enjoy your content or your live stream, leave a like, subscribe to your channel. And that, in my opinion, is success when it comes to being a YouTuber.